This week, I'm throwing down. You're rushing past a step. I've got to learn fast, and it's not going to be pretty. <clears throat> Five days to train. I am getting a little beaten up. And the world's best teachers. Release it, release it. Yep. Nice adjustment. Elbow comes out. All right, you ready? Let's go. I'm Tim Ferriss. Best-selling author and human guinea pig. I'll show you how to make the impossible possible by bending the rules. I'll find the world's best teachers and push myself to the edge to deconstruct, decode, and demystify some of the world's toughest challenges in record time. If I can do it, so can you. The next five days, I am going into a hardcore mind and body challenge. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu hit the mainstream of martial arts when it was used to win the first Ultimate Fighting Championship in 1993. BJJ, as it's known, allows someone to defeat larger opponents by using joint locks and chokeholds. My objective is to learn the principles of all of BJJ through one submission move that I'll have to use against a world champion at the end of the week. Guide me through my training, I've called on an old friend. He also happens to be the legendary international chess master upon whose life the book and film Searching for Bobby Fischer was based. Timbo. Josh Waitskin. What's up, brother? Josh gave up competitive chess in 1999 and went on to apply his learning techniques to the martial arts. He soon became a world champion in Tai Chi push hands and then became the first person to receive a black belt under five-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion Marcelo Garcia. Josh and Marcelo now co-own the Marcelo Garcia Jiu-Jitsu Academy in New York City. Thanks for having me over. You got it. You got it. We have a hell of a lot of work to do. I did wrestle in high school, and I do have a little bit of exposure to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but compared to Josh, I am starting at square one. So what I have in mind for you is a really deep dive into one piece of the Jiu-Jitsu game. And I'm gonna frame this initially through chess. Even though this week's experiment is about jujitsu, Josh's teaching will utilize high-level principles of chess. And today is unique because Josh hasn't touched a chess piece in three years, and we've never played together before. I first sought Josh out in 2008 when I read The Art of Learning, his amazing book about his approach to accelerated learning. Tim devotes himself at deconstructing the first 80 to 85 percent of the learning process. My life's work is really that last 1% of the learning process. And so we tend to focus on different things, but there's huge similarities. So what do you know about chess, man? I know the pieces move. You know that they do move. Do you know I how do. they move? I know they do move. So first of all, when most people first learn chess, they learn the openings. So you come here, and I come here, and then you come here, and I make a move, and then you bring your queen out early, and now you've won a chess game. Yeah. Right? So I can teach you thousands of ways like this to memorize ways to beat me very quickly. Yeah. Let's do another approach. Let's take all the pieces off the board. This is maybe the most simple position in all of chess. So it's a position of reduced complexity where we can learn so much. Josh is very effective as a learner and as a teacher in part because he's willing to be contrarian. So as opposed to starting with, say, openers, for chess, which you would expect, that's what almost everyone does, he'll start with the end game. He'll start with where you want to go so that you're learning principles that can be applied anywhere, and that makes you very adaptable and it makes you very formidable. That can also be translated to jujitsu. It can be applied to anything. So first of all, what are the principles we can touch here? Well, we can touch the power of empty space, right? So you know in the fight game, everyone's looking at where the punch or the body is going, but people don't tend to know how to exploit the space left behind. As I move, I can see the empty space, and now you fill it. In chess, you win by putting your opponent in checkmate, which is when his king can't escape capture. In jujitsu, you can win by making your opponent tap out, 
which is when they can't escape a choke or joint lock and are forced to either admit defeat or suffer the consequences. As the chess game goes on and you move closer to the end game, you get stronger, mm -hmm. you get more confident. Yeah. So studying the end game is essentially having good wind as a fighter. One strategy for learning jujitsu, as prescribed by Josh, yeah. is to start with the end game. He wants to teach me a formidable choke called the guillotine. When applied correctly, the guillotine can win a fight by rendering an opponent unconscious within three to eight seconds. Choke holds that only restrict breathing are less effective than the guillotine, which restricts both air and blood flow, knocking out the opponent faster. So it's a reversal, it's a contrarian approach that I'm hoping will allow me to really make some quantum leaps in my performance on the mats. This is something I've wanted to tackle for a really long time. Beautiful. So. All right, dude. Your chest is, is, um, needs some work. <laughs> <laughs> and jiu-jitsu needs some work, too. I know, we're gonna do it. <laughs> my anxiety level's up a bit. Not once did I feel like I could finish him from any of those positions. My chess lesson from Josh Waitzkin illustrated his end game strategy, which is to start with a small final move that demonstrates very broad principles. Now it's time to apply the end game to jujitsu via one move, the guillotine. Josh is taking me to his jujitsu academy, where my current skills, or lack thereof, will be tested. We're talking about in the chess, deep study the micro to learn the macro. We're gonna focus on a very small pool of information. Then once you've internalized that, we're gonna work on set setups, getting there from six or eight different places. And it'll get very dynamic. So if you're patient with it, in a few days you'll be doing some awesome stuff with it. But don't rush. You know patience is mine. I know, I check your my core virtue. virtue. That's right. We're in trouble. <laughs> Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a beautiful way to level the playing field between physically unequal opponents. By bringing the fight to the ground, strategy and technique can overcome size and power. Josh's game plan this morning is basically to throw me to the wolves. The purpose of the before test is to establish my before baseline so that we can measure my progress throughout the rest of the week. It's been a really long time since I've rolled at all. So going straight into it with the before test gets my anxiety levels up a bit. The people who train here are serious competitors in the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My opponent this morning will be John Sateva, a world champion who's been training here for years. And I have to roll with him for four minutes. Not only do I lack the technique, I also lack the stamina. Not once did I feel like I could finish him from any of those positions. John exposed some key weaknesses. You're not moving as fluidly as he is, so he's taking advantage of all the transitions. This week's experiment is very much all-encompassing. It's mind, it is body, it is certainly emotion, and I have to keep all three in order or I won't accomplish what I want to accomplish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on, first of all, a grip where you put out one hand, the other grips like that. Okay, then this is gonna be the motion. You're just creating a, a beautiful leverage device. I'm starting to see, in just my first few minutes of training, just how nuanced this move is. Marcelo Garcia, the co-owner of this academy, is the king of the guillotine. He's won five world championships and is considered the Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and Wayne Gretzky combined of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world. Marcelo's got the guillotine down to a science. It's more about technique and less about brute strength. If you know how to leverage your weight, and position your arms, hands, and legs, then you can force your opponent to tap out with very little energy expenditure. One thing that you're doing is you're kind of dropping this so elbow so deep yep. to get that extra rotation I'm that you're losing this, this side. I would suggest really refining that rotation. Yeah, good. Beautiful, look at you. Very yeah, good. Very good. Okay. Nice. Huge progress. Yeah. Cool. It's a good session. Whew. End of day one. Uh, I am getting a little beaten up, no huge surprise. As you might be able to see here, I've got nice bruising 
I'm hoping it's not the floating rib. All in all, very successful day. I am a little nervous about the 12.30 to 1.30 sparring tomorrow because that's more of an uncontrolled environment. I'm gonna review with MG in action, looking at the highlight rules of Marcel with his various entrances, and then straight to bed. You're rushing past a step. I don't have time to fix all my weaknesses. It's capitalizing some of the strengths. The clock is winding down to my final test. Now that I've learned the basics of the guillotine choke, John's going to ratchet up the stakes and practice sparring with me. They know exactly what I'm going for, the guillotine, the end game. And I don't really have any opener or middle game. So that led to some very, very interesting roles. I got choked, I got armbarred, I got choked some more, I got armbarred again. However, I did improve dramatically from when I first rolled. And for me, it's all about rate of improvement. To help me use the guillotine in sparring, I'm going to get coaching from a living legend, Marcelo Garcia. I don't want to force his shoulder. I don't want to force anything that maybe can be stronger than my arms. Marcelo is known as the master of the scramble. In those flurries of action where it seems like no one has a dominant position, there's a huge flurry of activities, legs and arms and heads flying all over the place. What seems very uncontrolled is something that Marcelo is good at controlling. There are actually several ways to finish someone with the guillotine. It all depends on where you start and where you end up. Marcelo is a master at all of them, but his best finish is so well done that everyone here at the gym has dubbed it the Marcelo team. Elbow come up, elbow comes up. My tendency is to rush and to try to force moves at the wrong times. You don't need to push to do one move right away. Wait a little bit longer, wait to see what he's gonna do. Just change the scenario. You need to allow the opponent the space to destroy themselves, just like chess. What do you do with that empty space? What do you do with the void? You apply a ton of pressure, then release unexpectedly, causing your opponent to slip up. It's something that Marcelo is excellent at doing on the mats. It's something that Josh is excellent at doing on the chessboard. And I need to grasp that concept, and I need to practice it. Now we have to make this faster and stronger. Whenever you're trying to emulate someone like Marcelo, a master in their craft, you can't emulate all of it. You have to separate the skills from the attributes. Marcelo's flexibility, I'm not going to have after a week. Marcelo's speed, I'm not going to have after a week. Maybe not ever in my life. But his technical fluidity, the way that he preemptively acts to catch openings, all of those things are teachable and I think can be learned in a short period of time. Is it, is it right here? I don't this because it's going to be too okay. big to get under his neck. I'm pretty much like just something narrow. If you think of it as an arrowhead, trying to penetrate a target, i.e. you get through this or this, you have this is the biggest, this is slightly smaller, this is even smaller still. So this can get through, thread through most easily. I need a break from the mats, but I also want to keep practicing Josh's principles. So I'm heading to Washington Square Park, where chess hustlers play day and night. I'm going to kill you all the day long. I'm going to kill you. Josh hooked me up with an old friend of his, Maurice Ashley, to guide me through the completely wild side of chess. You want to take this guy on? Yeah, go, we'll go for it, man. <laughs> oh, you are in chess, man? Me? He doesn't even look at that, the ball. Yeah? He doesn't even look at the ball. Look at it. Ooh, there's a lot of talking oh. going on. These guys are lightning fast. I'm barely keeping track of the pieces. 
Take that. Wait a minute. Let me get rid of this guy. He's not friendly. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was right there. That was like a magic trick. I like the way you did that. No, nothing happened to you. That was like a magic trick. Nothing happened. Please disappear. Nothing has happened to you. Nothing has happened to you. Be comfortable. Be nice. That's yours. I never touch any piece. What? Watching Maurice's attacks and psychological warfare is helping me to move my thinking beyond high principles to tactics. It's an important lesson to bring back to the jujitsu mats. He's in trouble. You think he's in trouble? I agree. Ooh, that, that's gonna make it. Yeah, he resigned. It was a brilliant, I mean, amazing volley that, of course, ended with Maurice winning. What is your name? You didn't tell me your name. Maurice Ashley. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more day of training before Josh tests me on the map. Show me what you got. You're rushing past a step. You're having difficulty getting the elbow on top, and you're not going to be able to finish it. So we can do things very traditionally and have you finishing from the mounted guillotine from everywhere else. But I think it'll be difficult for your, your shoulders. Yeah. Also, there's a lot to learn. We want to get one finishing position really, really good, and then you want to be able to get that from anywhere. I don't have time to fix all my weaknesses, so let's capitalize on some of the strengths and pick one thing to focus on. Up to this point, I've been trying to learn several guillotine setups, but time is getting short, so I'm doing an 80-20 analysis. I need to focus on the most flexible finish, the Marcello team, and lead my opponents there. So even if I come in to say the mount on actually on top of someone, I will go to the bottom position to get into this beacon. Yeah, that's it there. That's what I mean. Very good. That is the thing of beauty. It's the night before the challenge. Very happy with what we've done up to this point and my progress, but I'm not sure my mind and body are going to be ready for everything tomorrow. Injuries are just part of the game. And if you try to play or compete in jujitsu without ever getting injured, you're never gonna train. Oftentimes it's about managing pain and then training with injuries and how you compensate for that. This is it, test day. The biggest challenge with the challenge is I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> I know it's related to the guillotine somehow, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen. You ready, man? As ready as I'm going to be. All right, we're not going to test you on exactly what you've learned. Marcelo is known as king of the scramble. We want, we want from you now to be king of the scramble. You're going to jump on the mats with your teacher here, and he knows exactly what you've been working on. He's not going to give you that at all. He's going to give you things that are right next to it. I want to see how many submissions you can catch in one minute. Okay. 60 seconds. If I've learned the essence of the guillotine, I should be able to apply it in situations I have not yet encountered. John will be presenting me with opportunities to try to guillotine him, but doing it in very, very short periods of time and in transition. And John's a beast. I'm not confident I can do it once. Certainly wasn't able to do that in my before test. All I have to remember is that my homing beacon, what I need to return to again and again, is the Marcello team. All right, you ready? Transitional awareness, let's go. Go. Beautiful, that's one. Move, let it move, let it open it up. Gorgeous. And that's two. Keep on going. Beautiful, Tim. Beautiful. That's three submissions. Excellent. Push the pace now, John. Let's go. Position. Opening, it's opening, it's opening. That's four. Beautiful, Tim. Let's catch another one. Let him move. Don't fight his movement. Nice adjustment. Beautiful. That's five. Well done. You got five submissions in 60 seconds and really hard, fast play. Beautiful. That blows me away. What made me really happy is maybe four out of five were some of the most fluid guillotines that I've had all week. I was totally exhausted, destroyed at the end, but you got to look at rate of progress. And man, I've made a lot of progress. I'm very happy with it. 
Incredible growth in a week, man. Really impressive. Awesome seeing how you learn. I feel like I can apply that now at the academy where I'm training. Just a phenomenal experience. Hoping to come back. Who knows what the technique, the end game will be next time. Proud of you, man. Hey guys, Tim Ferriss here. One of the things that kills me about TV is that you have to take all of this amazing footage. In our case, we had five to six days of 12 to 16 hours typically per day, and you have to chop it down to 21 or 22 minutes, which is a 30 minute show with the ads removed. It just makes me want to stab myself in the eyeballs with bicycle spokes. It's so agonizing. The good news is we have all that footage, and so we've taken huge extended scenes, we've taken interviews, we've taken tutorials, everything imaginable that we could get our hands on that we thought was really world class that we wanted to put in. And you can find it at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV, all spelled out, F-O-U-R, et cetera. And we really feel like we could have made the best two hour documentary imaginable on the subject that you just saw, or had five different shows of equal quality, all different with the footage that we captured. So please check it out. There's some amazing stuff. And you can also check out the podcast where I do very long, in some cases, two to three hour interviews with a lot of the experts in this show. And that's the Tim Ferriss Show, which was nominated one of the best of iTunes, which I'm very, very happy about. And uh, you can check out both. So find everything at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV. And if you think that's an oxymoron, by the way, you're right. If you want a four hour work week, do not work in television. Thank you for watching.